Have you forgotten how much power you really have? If a word spoken from your mouth indeed has the power to accomplish nearly anything or to destroy nearly anything. Are you living with an awareness of how much power you have, how much creative power, how much power is in your words, how much power is in your faith. Having coached people for nearly a decade, having been a student in the personal development space for going on 15 years, I just know somehow we ended up with a receiving that feels extraordinarily difficult. Something is off. When 20 years in, there are people still wondering what they're doing wrong. You are not alone, and I promise it does not have to be like this. There is a better way. I remember, God, the day that it hit me. My miracle does not lie in somebody or something out there. My miracle does not lie in a person, in a client, in an invitation, in a relationship, in an opportunity. My miracle does not lie in something that I do not currently have. But I've got all I need for the miracle, and it begins with what I speak. I celebrate in advance the way this changes our receiving forever. I celebrate in advance all the mountains that are moved and the miracles that are sparked as a result of this life-changing truth. That is all coming up on this episode, so stay right here. Welcome in, everybody, to the Stefan Lovegrove Show. All things are possible for the one who believes, and you are the one. I am so grateful you are here. In this episode, I want to share with you how faith and grace work together. Probably in a way you have never heard talked about before. And specifically in this episode, I want to explain to you the number one thing that I personally feel most law of attraction teachings get completely wrong and how it is tripping people up but also, of course, what to do instead. This is going to be a great one. If you are on YouTube, take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you happen to be listening on a podcast platform, make sure that you are subscribed and or following the show, whatever is applicable where you are listening. And let's all just take a moment right now for a little global check-in. All I'm going to ask for is a city. That's all I want to know right now in the comments on any platform. If you are able to comment, everybody participate, check in. Let's have a family roll call check in moment together. And I want to know what city you are tuning in from today. So feel free to comment right now. Let me know. And I look forward to finding out where this teaching is reaching all over the globe. But thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. Now, this is a spontaneous teaching. It is not one I have had in the works for a while, but rather one that I really felt spontaneously called and inspired to record for you today. And Just for a little bit of context, whenever and wherever this happens to be reaching you, in this community, we are currently going on a journey together that we are calling 77 Days of Grace. And it's really just one big experiment that we all happen to be doing right now to find out just how much there really is for us to receive, not through striving, not through hustle, not through achievement, but when we choose to open up to receive through grace. And so this isn't a planned series with a slate of content that I had in mind beginning to end. This isn't a traditional series really whatsoever. It's 
77 days where every single one of us gets to have our own personal experience and really adventure in faith and adventure with God. And as we have been on this journey, myself included, I am, of course, open to wherever it leads. In fact, just to share with you, on my end, personally, I have already written down over 20 things, probably, that I feel like God has been speaking to me about during this time. And I don't share that to say, you need to be doing it the same way, or you need to have a list already by now. But just really to acknowledge here that I am in it with you going through these 77 days. And again, I had nothing planned. I had no curriculum, so to speak, going into the 77 days. But I am committed to stay in this journey and to keep finding out where it's taking us. Uh, so all of that being said, if you need to catch up, I am going to put this into a YouTube playlist that will be ever growing and expanding with all of the resources that may support you, specifically around 77 Days of Grace. If you need to get caught up with the original experience where I announce this whole thing, if you need to get caught up with the very last episode in which I talk about you can't mess it up, a powerful belief that I want you to hold all through this experience, or if you need to get the documents, the download that I created for you to use during this time, all of that is available for you. And again, I'm going to put this episode up on YouTube within the playlist so you can find and access everything that you need there. But in this spontaneous episode today, I wanted to talk to you about the relationship between faith and grace. You know, somebody recently asked me, what are my favorite things to talk about in my teaching and in content and in interviews? If I could pick anything, what are my favorite things to talk about that I just never get tired of? And I don't know if this is my permanent for all time answer, but I told this person, if I had to pick, I would say the things I often love to talk about the most are faith, grace, and prosperity. Those are three things that I could endlessly be in conversation about for all sorts of reasons. Faith, grace, and prosperity. And I particularly wanted to share that and just hone in on this for a moment because I am aware that in a lot of people's minds, faith and grace don't necessarily go together thematically. That frankly, in a lot of teaching, and you all know I love teaching, I consume and I listen to a lot of teaching on a regular basis, but in a lot of teaching, faith and grace are not presented side by side very often. They're almost seen as separate things, unrelated things, very different things. And I understand that if we, you know, if we were to look at them in very simple terms, a message of faith can at the core sound like a message that tells you, you have a role to play. And then a message of grace can at the core sound like a message that says, it's not all on you. And so I'm very aware those could even seem like a contradiction. Like, which is it, Stefan? Can you just pick one? Is it that I have a role to play and that that really makes a difference and that that really matters? Is that the message? Or is it not about me? Is it bigger than me? Is it not all about me? And the truth is, I just need to relax and be held and be loved and be taken care of. Which is it? 
And so I want to talk to you today about the way that I see faith and grace and how they go together because to me, there is a wonderful truth and an incredible flow waiting for each and every one of us here. And so that's what I want to talk to you about for a few moments today in this spontaneous episode. In the process, as I teased, I am going to share with you the number one thing that I believe most law of attraction teachings are getting wrong, which is confusing and frustrating so many people. And that lights me up, knowing that I'm going to be sharing that and hopefully setting some people free today. But Before we get to that, what I want to do is read a text that is inspiring this particular episode, pray over our time today, and then dive in. So I want to read you some verses that come from a passage in Mark 11. Mark 11 is the context here, and it reads as follows. The next morning, As they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. He noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. And so he went over to see if he could find any figs. But there were only leaves. So Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat your fruit again. Some translations would word it as, Jesus cursed the tree. And the disciples heard him say it. The text goes on to say, that evening, Jesus and the disciples left the city. The next morning, as they passed by the fig tree that he had cursed, the disciples noticed it had withered from the roots up. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day. And he exclaimed, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered and unalived. (laughs) That's my YouTube adaption. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe that it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you have received it, it will be yours. Let's take a moment and pray together over our time today. God, I thank you for every single person who partners with my work, every single person who is a part of this community, and every single person who is listening to this teaching right now, whoever they may be and however they got here. I ask that you would speak through me now with a powerful message of faith, and an equally powerful message of grace. I pray that you would show people how they go together, what this flow looks like, and how they can step into it in their daily lives, starting right here and right now. I ask that you would lead me, guide me, direct me as I speak. May I share everything that would be helpful to people and nothing that would not. Thank you, God, for translating it in an individualized, personalized, customized way that every single person can hear and comprehend. I speak all of this in the name of the one who spoke this text and said, all things are possible for the one who believes. And as I teach today, it is certainly my confession, I am the one. 
and so it is, and so we are. Amen. So, what is the flow of faith and grace working together? That's what I spontaneously felt led to speak to today. Again, continuing the very organic unfolding of 77 Days of Grace for us. And I'm excited to share this one. I really do believe this story holds the answer. Now, before we dive into the faith grace piece specifically, I want to point out something that I think is just unavoidable, just too significant to look over when it comes to this story. In this story, Jesus is showing us the power that each one of us holds. Specifically, the power within our words and within our faith. Now, I'm not going to spend much time on this in this particular episode because I feel like I've talked about it so many other places, but I will point out and just remind you, make sure that it's abundantly clear for a second. Jesus is not just speaking about himself here in a specific and unique and one-of-a-kind way. Jesus is speaking to his people, his followers, his friends, his loved ones, his team. Jesus is speaking to them about their power and their words and their faith. And that is very clear in the context, but I just want to reiterate that because so many religious people read these texts and the only thing that they ever think about it is the miracles of Jesus as a one-time thing, as like a one-time special event, a one-time, never-to-be-repeated miraculous phenomenon. And the only problem with that is that Jesus seemed to think his team could do the same things that he could do. In fact, Jesus actually sent them out to go do the same things. Not only that, Jesus tells them greater things than the works I have done, you will do. So just to reiterate for a moment there, this is not just Jesus demonstrating something about what he could uniquely do. Jesus was giving a teaching and a principle and a demonstration about the power that we have, especially, most specifically, the power that we have in our words and with our faith. And may I just mention here, I think it's beautiful that he didn't curse a person in order to create an example. He cursed a tree, and not just any tree, but a tree that was not producing as is. Meaning, there actually wasn't any loss here when all was said and done. That in the process of using this as a teaching tool, as an example, as a demonstration, we can notice no fruit was taken away from anyone in the process. Nobody was harmed. Nobody's good was impacted. I think that's beautiful. But nonetheless, the point is still evident and the demonstration is still clear in this example that Jesus chooses to teach using a tree that is not producing any fruit. The, the truth is still evident here being demonstrated that this is how much power your words and your faith have. Now, I remember one time somebody was arguing with me a little bit about the power of words, and they said, I think you're just being superstitious. I don't believe in all of that. You, you know, I think you're just far more woo-woo than me. And somebody was arguing with me that, 
you know, come on. We don't need to think about words with all that, you know, <laughs> all that intention behind it, all that thoughtfulness behind it, all that carefulness behind it. What, what does it really matter? You're just being superstitious. And if you tend to feel that way, if you are a person who feels like anybody who really uses care and intention and thoughtfulness when it comes to their words, that maybe they're just paranoid or superstitious, I would remind you of the text that says it this way. A word spoken from your mouth can accomplish nearly anything or destroy nearly anything. A word spoken from your mouth can accomplish nearly anything or destroy nearly anything. If you're taking notes, you might want to write that down. If you're in the comments, somebody type that one out for us with the timestamp. And maybe we just need to pause here, and I just want to ask you today, have you forgotten how much power you really have? Because, again, we're not just talking about Jesus here. We're talking about you. If a word spoken from your mouth indeed has the power to accomplish nearly anything or to destroy nearly anything, are you living with an awareness of how much power you have, how much creative power, how much power is in your words, how much power is in your faith? And I believe that the lesson here, the message here is very clear, that if it works with a tree, this is a principle that works across the board. There is power in what we speak, and there is power in what is spoken over us. And I want to challenge you today. There's a couple of applications that we can take from this truth, and this is not the main point of this episode, but let me give it to you along the way. Somebody please type these out in the comments. Number one, speak blessing over yourself. Speak blessing over yourself. Some of you listening today are very used to, without even realizing it or doing it on purpose, cursing yourself. I don't mean cursing like in a literal sense that you're using what we would call cuss words, right? But energetically and metaphysically and spiritually, some of you are very used to cursing yourself and cursing your home and cursing your job and cursing your family and cursing your business and then wondering why it never gets better. And there is so much more power in your words than you realize. This is not paranoia. This is a principle of power. So number one, speak blessing over yourself. Number two, speak blessing over others. Speak blessing over others. How many of us, when we enter the various environments in our day-to-day -day life, were not showing up? as if we have the power to bring something to life or to destroy something simply by how we show up, by what we do with our power, by what we speak. Number one, speak blessing over yourself. Number two, speak blessing over others. And then last but not least, real quickly here, number three, let the blessing be spoken over you to release old stories. Number three, for those taking notes or writing this out in the comments, let the blessing be spoken over you to replace old stories. Again, I don't think this is superstition at all. I think this is serious. I think this is significant. I think this is as real as anything. And there are people listening to this episode today and somebody spoke something over you at some point in your journey and it has stuck with you in consciousness ever since. 
And I know that some of you know what I'm talking about because some of you, it's feeling uncomfortable even to keep listening right now. Some of you, as soon as I said it, the person came to mind, their face popped into your imagination and what they said is now ringing in your ears even as I teach this. And I felt like I needed to pause for a moment here and say, if this works for a tree, if this can happen in this story to a tree, it can surely happen to a human. But the good news is it is not permanent and it can also be reversed. It can also be overridden. I feel like that is correct grammar, but for some reason it doesn't sound right. You let me know in the comments how I should be wording that. It can also be overridden. I still don't think that sounds right, but hopefully you get the idea here. And I really do feel there are people listening to this. And until you change the story, the thing that somebody spoke over you that has stuck in your consciousness ever since is going to keep being a creative force in your life. We must replace that. We must release what they said. And we must put in its place a new story that actually serves you, that is grounded in love, that aligns with who God says that you are. And by the way, that's one reason that I attempt in all of my teachings and my partner notes and my content to speak a blessing over people again and again and again. I will never forget the day that somebody told me, Stefan, you just might be the first person to ever speak a blessing over me in my entire life. Now that breaks my heart. That makes me sad to hear if I'm being real. And yet, it also points me to my calling and it points me to my purpose. And I want to change the culture of the way that we talk to each other. And I want to change the culture of the way that we talk about our lives. And if I have to be the first one to speak a blessing over you, then I will gladly sign up and take my place and speak it. But number three, I, I knew somebody today needed to hear, let the blessing be spoken over you to replace old stories. So number one, speak blessing over yourself. What are you speaking over your life? Number two, speak blessing over others. Do you realize the power that you carry in every environment you enter? Number three, let the blessing be spoken over you to replace old stories. And specifically with number three, I am just praying in real time, even as I record this and before it gets to you, I am praying that if there is any story that has been lingering within your mind, within your heart, within your consciousness, that really is a curse. I don't mean a curse in like a spooky Halloween way. I mean a curse like it's not true and it's not serving you, but it feels true and you can't seem to shake it and you have felt doomed to live into it ever since. I am praying that right here, right now, those stories would be dissolved. Those stories would be destroyed in consciousness. Those stories would be cleared and released and replaced with something new, replaced with something greater, replaced with something true. And I am asking and I am affirming today that you would be guided to a truer story, a better story, to one that comes from your creator and that you would be able to receive it on all levels, that you would receive the blessing that God is speaking over you even right now, knowing that the blessing is more powerful than any curse and that what God has spoken over you is final and eternal, that what God has blessed cannot be cursed. And so we have this story, an incredible demonstration of the power that we hold, the power of words, the power of faith. But more important in this episode today, at least, than the miracle itself here, 
there's a flow that I want us to look at, that I felt really called to emphasize for somebody today. I want to talk about the flow of faith and grace working together, especially for you and for these 77 days of grace. And I want us to learn something about the way that Jesus moved in this miracle. I want us to pay attention to what Jesus was demonstrating in this miracle. Because here's what I see in this text. Jesus spoke it, then released it, then moved on. Jesus spoke it, then released it, then moved on. Here's another way of saying that. He believed it and received it then went about his business knowing it was done. He believed it and received it, then went about his business knowing it was done. Now, the disciples end up being astounded, which is, of course, why they ask about it, as they realize, wait, 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 wait a minute. Didn't you just speak to that tree yesterday? And now it's changed. Wait a minute. And so the team asks Jesus a question, which gives us the most famous faith text of all time, where Jesus says, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen if you believe in your heart. And have no doubt, Jesus says, I'm telling you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. This is probably without debate, the most famous faith text of all time. But there's a principle here from not just this text, but this entire story that I think people miss in this context. See, The way that I read that text, it's almost like Jesus is saying to them, I know that what I say will happen. I'm not concerned. I don't doubt. I understand how it works. And I believe it always works that way. And so it's almost like Jesus is saying to them, you've got to understand, as soon as I spoke it, That was it. I knew it was done. I knew there was nothing else to do. And so it was safe to leave the tree. It was safe not to keep staring at it and waiting right by the tree until something happened. It was safe to go to sleep and forget about it entirely and not even necessarily to think about it again until today and this moment when, lo and behold, we happen to walk by the tree and sure enough, exactly what I spoke had come to pass. But it was safe to leave the tree because it was already done. And I wanted to highlight this for you today because As I understand it, this is the flow of faith and grace and how they work together. And this is how I would word it. Please write this down in your notes. Somebody please type this out in the comments. This is the flow. Believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. I pray those words begin to echo in your consciousness as you write them down, as you type them out. This is the flow of faith and grace. Believe, receive, release. Now, let's talk metaphysics and spiritual principle for a moment. Because this is really the part that I personally believe 
so many law of attraction teachings get wrong. And people end up confused. People end up frustrated. People end up so burnt out. I know many of you know those people and many of you have been there or are currently there yourselves. So let's talk about this. I'm thinking all the way back to the first time I watched The Secret. Okay, but that's hardly a unique teaching, right? These ideas show up many, many, many places. And of course, I'm generalizing here, but I also believe what I'm speaking to is going to be something many of you have experienced and encountered and can relate to. And essentially, what a lot of law of attraction teachings will tell you is, ask, believe, receive. Let me know in the comments if you've heard that. Let me know in the comments if that has been part of your journey of learning at some point over the years with manifestation. Let me know if you have heard this sequence taught to you before. Ask, believe, receive. Ask, believe, receive. This is a common idea from Law of Attraction teachings. But you know what I started to notice? Initially, when you hear that, it sounds pretty simple. All you have to do is ask, believe, receive. We're going to teach you how. This is the three-step process to get anything that you want. Ask, believe, receive. And listen, I remember watching The Secret and being like, wow, I'm truly learning the secret to life here. Ask, believe, receive. This can work for anything. Ask, believe, receive. I now know what to do for anything in life. Ask, believe, receive. But here's what I noticed. Somewhere along the way of that journey, receiving starts to become a very complicated and convoluted and mysterious job. Let me know in the comments if you relate to this. Somewhere along the way, the receiving piece starts to feel confusing. The receiving piece starts to feel hard. The receiving piece, dare I say it, starts to feel endless. And people somehow get stuck there and they don't seem to be making progress but they also don't know what to do they don't know what they should be doing and so they just keep trying to receive some more receive some more receive some more and and it feels like man i'm not sure what i'm doing wrong i'm not sure if i'm doing it right i'm not sure if i've done enough you can see the themes here that matter to me so much. You can see why this is relevant. Those of you going through 77 days of grace, and I have just seen so many times over the years, people somehow get stuck or lost or burnt out in this receiving zone, trying, trying, trying their best with everything they can find and every tool that possibly looks like it might have something for them. Constantly thinking to themselves and wondering, maybe I'm just not in alignment yet. Maybe I still have some block that I can't see. Maybe I've got some more healing to do and then I'll be ready and then I can finally receive. So let me keep trying to heal. Let me keep trying to get better. Let me keep trying to get more in alignment. Let me keep trying to fine tune my vibration. Let me keep trying to locate more blocks that I can clear. One of these days, I'm going to receive. One of these days, I'm going to be ready to receive. One of these days, I'm going to be able to receive. And I want to be very clear here. I do believe So many of these foundational principles, the principles behind that original ask, believe, receive message that so many of us encountered were shared with wisdom and with good intentions and with genuine attempts 
to help people and to support people and to make receiving feel easy and doable and accessible. But I just know, having coached people for nearly a decade, having been a student in the personal development space for going on 15 years, I just know somehow we ended up with a receiving that feels extraordinarily difficult. See, an easy three-step process of ask, believe, receive is great if that actually works for people and it actually feels that way. But I know people who are 20 years into their journey wondering, why can't I get this receiving thing down? Why am I still not ready to receive? How much more is it going to take for me to finally one day hopefully receive. And I'm being very blunt, I'm being very transparent and real here today, but I just think something is off when 20 years in, there are people still wondering what they're doing wrong. And it must be another block, and it must be another program I need, and it must be something else I need to fix, and something else I need to work through, and something else I need to heal. And I just think, I'm all for doing the work. I'm all for personal development. But when, when somebody can be five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years plus, I've even met people and heard 40, 50 years into it, I'm still trying to figure out the receiving of this. In my humble opinion, something is off. Something is off. If we have ended up in a reality where receiving feels this extraordinarily difficult, and I believe it never had to be this way. It was never meant to be this way. It was never supposed to be this way. Let me just share with you an example from my own personal experience. And maybe this will be controversial. Maybe some of you will resonate. Maybe some of you won't like this example at all. That's okay. I'm really fine no matter what and no matter how this lands. But this is the example I felt led to share. Because see, I remember when I first started bringing God into the money conversation 14 years ago at the time of this recording, And when I began to give and when I began to do the spiritual practice known as tithing, my honest story, my personal experience, my real testimony is it actually flowed pretty naturally. And what I experienced in the wake of making that decision and beginning that was actually pretty effortless and pretty natural and pretty easy. And some of you have heard me share before the full story and all the examples and all the details. But as one example, I will tell you, just a few months after beginning to do this and involving God in the money conversation and putting everything into the hands of God, just a few months in, I was introduced to somebody I had a divine connection and conversation occur, and I found myself getting dream opportunities, dream gigs to play music that I loved, and to do so in a way where I made more money in a single day than I was used to making in two weeks' time. Now, I wasn't fully in the world (laughs) of online coaching and online business and manifestation content yet, okay? And so at the time, I wouldn't have used a phrase like, this was my quantum leap. I I didn't even know that term at that time. And yet, if we were to put it in that vocabulary, this really was a quote-unquote quantum leap for me. Because within a short span of time, the money that I was used to having it take two weeks for me to make. Suddenly, I had the ability and the opportunity, and I was doing it, to make that same amount in a day. It really was a quote-unquote quantum leap, but it wasn't forced. It wasn't manufactured. I didn't make it happen. 
it was pretty natural. It was pretty easy. And actually, in those first several years of let me stay in the flow and trust and keep putting it all in God's hands, again, many of you have heard me share the stories, the examples, the details. There were so many things that unfolded for me, and it was natural, and it was easy, and it was not complicated to receive. And then over time, as I know many of you will be able to relate to, and as I know many people experience, over time, I started taking on rules. Rules about my relationship with money. Rules about all the different things that I needed to do to say yes to wealth. Rules about this is what a millionaire consciousness looks like and rules about how to show up as the future wealthy version of me and rules for abundance, rules for prosperity, rules. And I started trying to do all of these things that I was told are going to make it better. And I started trying to be mindful of all of these things every single moment, every single day. And There were things I was writing. There were things I was saying. There were things I was doing. And and it just got so much and so complicated. And I'm not even against any of the little things, but I remember it all suddenly started feeling so difficult to receive. So many steps required to receive. So complicated to receive. And I've got to make sure I'm perfectly in alignment. And I've got to make sure I'm a vibrational match. And I've got to make sure that I have a millionaire consciousness or a billionaire consciousness. And I've got to make sure that I have no blocks. And I've got to make sure that the frequencies of wealth fill my home and fill my life. And I've got to listen to this. And I've got to make sure I do this. And I've got to, and again, I make content for people to listen to. So (laughs) I'm not against resources. I'm not against content. I'm not against tools. What I'm speaking about here is a consciousness that somewhere along the way, by accident, I found myself in. And I don't know about you. I can't speak for you. All I can speak for is myself and say, there's a consciousness I found myself in by accident that was the opposite of grace. And it might have been spiritual, but it was just as much a hustle as the people bragging about their 80-hour weeks. There was so much performance in it. There was so much striving in it. There was so much achievement in it. And I was absolutely hustling for my worthiness. I was absolutely working to earn love. And somewhere along the way, by total accident, it just got so difficult to receive. And I want you to know if you're listening to this today and something about what I'm sharing resonates with your experience, I see you, I understand you, and I love you deeply and unconditionally. And I am so grateful you are here. And you are not alone. And I promise it does not have to be like this. There is a better way. It's not supposed to be this difficult to receive. If you're listening to this and you're on ritual number 127 to try to see if this one finally fixes your vibration, if this one finally does the trick, if this one finally removes that final block, if you're in that mindset listening right now, I want you to hear it doesn't have to be that difficult to receive. And again, I am not against teaching or learning or practices or tools or resources at all, but I am against things feeling so complicated that it quickly becomes discouraging and exhausting and hopeless for people to ever think that they could receive. You know, Jesus actually once talked about this. I feel like it's a lesser known, lesser appreciated, underrating teaching. But Jesus once talked about this and actually spoke very strongly about the religious leaders of this time and specifically the way in which 
they took something that was meant to be a blessing and they turned it into a burden. And I have never been able to shake that idea as a leader. I never want something good, something healthy, something powerful, something loving, something true. I never want something that was intended to be a blessing to accidentally turn into a burden for people. Because if that happens, and when that happens, we have missed the point entirely. And so Jesus says, and Jesus makes it very clear, all of these teachings and all of these principles and everything that comes from God was designed to be a blessing to human beings because all along and from the beginning of time, always, 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 God has always wanted to bless the creation. So it was always designed to be a blessing. And I find it so striking. Jesus calls out so directly, something is wrong when what was meant to be a blessing now feels like a burden. And I would suggest to you, in the same token, something is wrong when we went from this very simple, easy, streamlined process to anything you want, and it felt exciting, and it felt full of life and possibility, and it felt empowering. And now, so many people are stuck in the receiving no man's land, feeling like maybe they're just not meant to receive, feeling like maybe it's just never going to happen for them, where it feels so impossibly difficult to receive. I, I just guarantee you, I know at the core of my being, it was never meant to feel like that. And I have to say, this may just be the most important teaching on creating your reality that I have ever done. I am so grateful I felt led to start recording today. I feel this one incredibly strong. And if you're listening and you're newer to me and you're thinking, wow, he's really fired up about this. Uh, please understand, I am passionate about this. I am incredibly earnest and enthusiastic to communicate this message today because it's all coming from a, a knowing place. It's all coming from personal experience. And I want every single person listening today to feel as free as I do. And thank you, God, that freedom is happening for people from the inside out through this episode today. Let me know in the comments if you are still with me listening here. But this is really how I would summarize it, okay? As we get into what is the flow described in this story, in this text. In the traditional law of attraction framework, the way it is presented to people is three-step process, ask, believe, receive. And though I understand the ideas and the principles and the truths behind that, what I'm speaking to here essentially is the way that step three accidentally becomes the never-ending story for people. And so they just stay in step three, never really knowing when they're done. <laughs> and here's where it gets really tricky. Maybe you can relate to this. Though we know this doesn't really make sense from a manifestation perspective, people find themselves in step three. And if they were to answer the question, how will I know when I have done enough to receive? How will I know that I have done the job and done it correctly? 
how will I know that my receiving is successful my receiving is complete and I can now rest and if people were intellectually honest often the answer that they would have to give is when it shows up when it manifests externally when I have it I'm holding it I'm living in it in physical form even though they know that's not the quote unquote right answer if people were being intellectually honest a lot of people would have to say really Stefan the only way that I could know my receiving worked is if and when it finally shows up and do you see the difficulty here do you see the catch-22 do you see why this turns into seek and do not find because then there's no room for me to rest or relax or trust or surrender or let go because I always have to worry but it's not here yet do I need to do anything else to receive do I need to do anything else to receive do I need to do anything else to receive and I really believe understanding it this way it is going to open somebody's eyes today and set somebody free today to the reason that people get stuck in step three and they never know how to leave because if the only way you know that you did it correctly is if and when it shows up you're always going to be waiting you're always going to be trying more you're never going to be able to let go to trust to rest to relax to breathe easy and that receiving stage will be endless and exhausting and miserable and so again though I'm not against the core ideas of course of ask believe receive I think there's a better way and a better flow and one that is really taught to us in this story and I'll give it to you again please write it down or type it out if you didn't the first time the flow that I want to talk to you about today is the flow of believe receive release and I know it sounds similar I know it uses a couple of the same words I know it sounds not that far off but stay with me this is really significant the flow that this story gives us is believe receive release let's unpack those three parts together part one believe is super important because it is of course essential that you get your belief behind it in the first place now I've shared this with you before I got this idea initially years ago from something called your wish is your command but if you're asking yourself what should I choose to believe for around any specific area of life the practical guidance I would give you is use this litmus test many of you have heard me mention it before you want to pick something that number one you can initially get your belief and your energy behind it might feel big it might feel a little daunting it might feel somewhat like a stretch but you do want to pick something that you can get your belief behind initially even if it's just a mustard seed there needs to be that mustard seed there needs to be something really look for is your energy behind it because there will be moments where you are tempted to doubt down the road and if from the very start you couldn't possibly get your belief or your energy behind it it's never going to last so number one litmus test pick something that you can get your belief and energy behind number two part two of this litmus test is you want to pick something that it feels good to think about you want to pick something that it feels good to think about and 
I want to speak to this for a moment, particularly from my coaching background and a decade of working with clients. Let me just say here, when people try to go after things, goals, desires, vision board stuff, whatever we're talking about, when people try to go after something, that thinking about it does not feel good. They are setting themselves up for so much discouragement and so much defeat and so much of a sense of failure that they then have to overcome and work against. And it is way too hard and so unnecessarily difficult. And so I, this wasn't in my notes, but I just felt led to speak to this. When you think about what do I want to believe for in any season of life or in any area of life? On a practical level, consider this litmus test. Number one, let me pick something that at least at the very beginning I can get my belief and my energy behind. And number two, let me pick something that feels good to think about. In other words, if you feel like a failure as soon as you start thinking about it, that's not it. If it puts you into immediate comparison or jealousy or insecurity every time you think about it, that's not it. At least that's not exactly the right thing. I'm not saying there's nothing for you to look at there, but that's not the angle you should be hitting it from most likely. If every time you think about it, you just feel nauseous or anxious or you want to run. Again, there may be some, you know, some resistance there that's important, that's worth looking at. But if you're going to pick something to believe for, it needs to be, it ideally should be something that it feels good to think about and something that you have belief and energy behind. I will also say very quickly, though that is my practical guidance, my spiritual guidance that I would infuse in the conversation here is, let God guide you and direct you on what to believe for. And can I just take a moment to boldly and unapologetically say here, I firmly believe one of the reasons my partners experience the results they do is that they are partnered not just with me, though of course I'm happy to be partnered with them in doing this work, but they are partnered with God as their source. And many of them operating from the consciousness of God as their business partner. And they're open to divine guidance and support and insights. And so God directs them to the vision, to the right dreams, to what they are meant to be believing for. So they're not the person doing the American Idol audition where everybody in the audience is thinking, this is probably not it for you. This is not the right dream. This is probably not meant to be your destiny. They're not that person. They're not going after that thing. Because God is leading them to what is actually for them. So part number one in this sequence is super important, believe, because it is important. It is crucial. It is essential that your belief is behind it in the first place. Then number two, part two in this equation, though I almost hesitate to call it an equation, but let's say instead this flow, okay, this flow that is being described here. Part number two is receive, receive. And I wrote in my notes, part two is crucial, but not complicated. I like that sentence. Thank you, God. Part two is crucial, but not complicated. And again, I am not against some of these original ideas that were presented in that ask, believe, receive message, but I also have to tell my truth and share my experience here today. 
that I think for so many people, not just for me and my own journey, but for so many people I've coached and worked with and spoken to over the years, the receiving step got so endless and so complicated and people never knew, have I done enough? Am I doing it right? Have I missed something? And I just want you to hear, and I believe God wants me to share this with you today in this way, part two, receive. This step in the flow is crucial, but it is not complicated. This is how I put it in my notes. Know that it is yours, know that it is done. Somebody please type that out in the comments. Know that it is yours, know that it is done. Know that it is yours, know that it is done. And let me just say here, again, trying to acknowledge the the valid contributions and the good people and the good intentions behind ask, believe, receive, ask, believe, receive. I think where the original idea really did come from is they were trying to speak to what it looks like and what it sometimes takes to know that it is yours, to let yourself have it, to let it get to you, to let it in, to actually receive it as done. And again, I understand where they were coming from and I acknowledge the truth and the validity behind a lot of that, but the message on my heart for you today, for everybody listening to this, and if it resonates, trust that it is for you, is this, receiving can be so much simpler than you have been made to think. Receiving can be so much simpler and so much easier than you have felt like it is. I feel like I'm supposed to be here today in this 77 days of grace telling you receiving is not as hard as you feel like it has to be. It's so much simpler. It's so much easier than you think. And then it's felt like in the past. This is what I want you to remember in your mind and take away from this episode today about what receiving entails. Know that it is yours. Know that it is done. Know that it is yours. Know that it is done. Know that it is yours. Know that it is done. See, here's what's interesting about this this part two, this step two in the flow that this story demonstrates for us. When Jesus explains his actions, and he talks about this with his team, let me actually just read it word for word here. Jesus says, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you have received it, it will be yours. Now, I don't have time to go through all the different translations and versions and iterations of this text, but what I want us to understand for a moment is Jesus seems to think that the receiving it is something that's supposed to happen right then and there during the prayer. You know, this is the best way I can put it, and God, please be with me and speak through me and articulate it better than my logical mind knows how right now. But the way that it is worded in the original language, Jesus is saying, I want you to be clear that you have received it right then and there. During the original, the, the initial, the very first prayer we could even say, I want you to know that you have received it there. Not that you're going to receive it. Not that you could receive it. Not that you one day hopefully will receive it. Jesus says, and this is truly the way it is literally worded and spoken. I want you to know that the receiving has happened during your prayer. Now, I want to clarify here something that I think a lot of people get confused is. He's not saying 
it has to manifest while you do the prayer. That is a misunderstanding. That is a misconception that creates all kinds of pressure. And so, for example, let's say somebody needs a large amount of money to show up to cover some business expenses, and they decide, I'm going to spend some time with God. I'm going to do my spiritual practice. I'm going to pray about this. And so they enter a space of prayer and spiritual practice. If they go in there with the mindset, I better get a call from the bank while I'm doing this. I better see a notification come through. I better have a giant payment come through. Or this tool didn't work. This prayer did nothing. That is a misunderstanding, okay? That is a bad use of this text. It is not saying the thing that you're holding the vision of has to externally manifest while you pray. That is not what it says. But what it does say is that you are supposed to be absolutely clear that you have received. It's not a question mark. It's not an unknown. It's not a future happening. You are supposed to be clear that you have received right then and there while you pray. And it is done, it is finished, it is decided, it is certain, it is so. Know that it is yours. Know that it is done right then and there. That is what this text expresses. And Jesus seems to indicate this is a crucial step. This is right at the center of it. This is right at the heart of it. Believe that you have received it. Now, before we talk about part three in the flow that Jesus is giving us, in the flow that this text describes and illustrates, I want to point out a couple of things real quickly about part two. First of all, I want to point out, very few religious people pray this way. And I find that so interesting. A lot of people pray as if it's all an unknown and we don't ever know God's will and you just never know what God is going to do and et cetera, et cetera. And I just can't help but point out very few religious people seem to take seriously this principle of when you pray. Believe that you have received it. Not, I wait to see. We just never know. We just never know God's will. We just never know what God is going to do. When you pray, believe that you have received it. Very few religious people take that seriously, and I had to point that out. But I also want to point out, this teaching, this principle, also makes it a whole lot simpler and a whole lot cleaner and easier than a lot of people's receiving process is. You know, another thing you will notice, and I hope I'm not getting too nerdy and carried away here, but another thing you will discover if you look in the original languages is that when Jesus uses the word receive, it is a word that essentially means to claim. It is a word that means, this is so good, I'm going to get fired up, family. It means to take something that already belongs to you, that is already yours, that already has your name on it. Do you see why I love the inheritance analogy so much? Because Jesus is inviting people here, when you pray, I want you to lay claim to something. I want you to take hold of something that already belongs to you. You know, one of my partners was sewing the other day and they said something to me. They said, I feel selfish asking for this, but what I really want to sew for is business growth and expansion. 
And you can imagine that <laughs> that got me fired up. I had a lot to share and to encourage them with around that. And ultimately, I just wanted them to know, as I would say to each and every one of you, it is not selfish, but in fact, I believe it is the most spiritual thing in the world to say yes to the fullness of your destiny, to say yes to more, yes to your next level, yes to where God is taking you, that the blessing automatically causes increase, that the blessing by definition means you are empowered to prosper. And so there is nothing selfish about asking for what rightfully belongs to you and what you have the spiritual authority to ask for. And I could talk about that for 30 minutes, but I will not. The point though is I use the inheritance analogy so, so, so much. And by the way, it's not me who came up with it. That analogy, that picture, that language is in so many spiritual texts because there is this idea here you are receiving something that has always been destined for you. You are receiving something that is already yours, that already has your name on it. And so in the original language, the invitation really is, when you pray right then and there, I want you to take it. I want you to claim it. I want you to take that which is already yours. And so let's notice the distinction here. Jesus is not saying, I want you to receive it, understanding that it might be a 30-year process before you're truly ready to receive. Jesus is saying, I want you to receive it, to claim it, to take that which is already yours right then and there as you pray. I want you to end the prayer and leave the prayer space knowing you have claimed it, you have taken it, that it is yours. That's powerful. That doesn't create an endless, complicated, I'll never know if I've done enough receiving. That makes it simple. That makes it easy. And so part two, step two in this flow is receive. Know that it's yours. Know that it's done. But now we get to part three of this flow. That is the most skipped and the most misunderstood part. And yet, the part that changes everything. See, part three is the part where you let it go. Because after all, that is what we do when we know that something is done. So part one is believe. Part two is receive. But part three, the most skipped and misunderstood part, is to release. This is the part where we let it go because that is always what we do when we know something is done. And I just personally think this step is what is missing for so many people in their ask, believe, receive equation because they never feel like they can release. They never feel like they've done enough to release yet. That they're never quite sure that it's time to release. But Jesus said in another place, unless a seed goes into the ground, unless it is let go of, unless the seed in its original form dissolves, a harvest can never appear. It can never turn into anything. What is that principle really saying? There must be a release. Nothing can happen without a release. And I don't know what kind of flow I'm in today, but it's a powerful one. The churchy word for it would be, it's an anointed one. Oh my God. 
And I feel so strongly for somebody listening right now. Nothing can happen until you release it. Nothing can shift until you release it. Nothing can grow until you release it. Nothing can heal until you release it. Nothing can get better until you release it. Step three, the most skipped, the most underappreciated, the most misunderstood one is the step of release. For a lot of people, this one is never in their equation. Or if it is, let's be blunt about this for a moment. If it is in a lot of people's equation, it's only there when they're desperate. (laughs) At the 11th hour, it's only there when they're at the end of their rope and they feel like, well, I can't do anything else now. I guess all we can do is release. I wonder as you're listening to this today, very neutral question, and it can be rhetorical. You don't have to answer in the comments, but I would love for you to sit with, just with yourself, what does it take for me to release? How often do I release something in my own life, mentally, emotionally, energetically, spiritually? What does it take for me to release? Please type the question out in the comments. Again, you don't have to share your answer unless you want to, but somebody please type that question out in the comments. What does it take for me to release? What is my relationship to the idea of release? And I want to give you an analogy here that I'm so excited about using. I think one of the best examples, the best pictures, the best analogies of releasing is an online shopping order. Because here's what I know. You can be so excited about something You can be so eager to get it in the mail, so ready for it to show up on your doorstep and choosing the fastest shipping option available and wishing that it could be door dashed to you in 45 minutes or less. But you know what I know? Once an order is placed, you don't just stay on the website and freeze yourself in place and pause everything else in your life and cancel everything else in the meantime and sit on that website, not doing anything else, not looking at anything else, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing every 30 seconds just to make sure that the order is still happening, just to make sure that it really is on the way, just to make sure that you didn't mess it up. What I know about an online shopping order is You might be eager, you might be excited, you might have great anticipation, but there will come a certain point where you place the order, you know that it is done, you know that it is headed your way, you know that it will soon be en route, and because of that, you release. You let it go. You know that you don't have to stay on the website. You know that you don't have to check it every 30 seconds. Furthermore, you know that checking it every 30 seconds doesn't speed it up even if you wish that it would. And so I want to use that analogy because I actually feel like that gives each and every one of us a picture in modern everyday terms that we will continually be reminded of with this example of what it looks like to believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. What do faith and grace look like together? Let's use this example. First, you choose the thing you want. It begins with desire. It begins with faith. It begins with vision. You choose the thing you want, which, yes, means that you have to have a vision for it and you have to know that you get to have it, that you are allowed to have it, that you are meant to have it. That is all in step one, part one, whatever we want to call it. Then you place the order. And in that moment, 
The decision is made. In that moment, the outcome is done. Think about this. When is the decision made for anything that you purchase online? If you just recently purchased something that you've loved and enjoyed, bring that example to mind. Think of something specific if you want. When was the decision made? When was the outcome determined for you to have that thing? And do you see what I mean here? The decision was not made when you checked the mail. The decision was not made when it showed up on your doorstep or in the mailbox or in a locker. That decision was not made when you brought it inside, when you opened the packaging, when you unwrapped it. The decision was made long before that. The outcome was decided long before that when you placed the order. That is part two. That is step two. And then step three, let go and let it show up with joy. Step three in this flow that the online shopping order exemplifies. Let go and let it show up with joy. And you might be listening to this thinking, well, Stefan, I'm impatient with online orders. So I don't know that this is a good analogy for me. I don't know that this works for me. And if that's you, I would say you need this episode all the more because there is a flow available for your life of peace and joy in every moment where you are fully able to enjoy your life and be present for it in every moment, not primarily living in a future casting waiting mode, waiting, waiting, waiting on life to begin when XYZ shows up. So I have three tips for you. Three quick tips today to help you live in this flow of faith and grace. And by the way, do you see the faith part and the grace part working together in this equation? Step one, it all begins with faith. Because if we don't have faith, this thing isn't going anywhere. This thing isn't moving at all. This thing isn't getting off the ground. It all begins with faith. That is the beginning point. That is the access point. But then it flows through grace. And what allows us to move from number two to number three, what allows us to release and then stay in that zone, in a place of peace and trust and surrender, what actually enables us to do that is a trust in grace that I only receive through grace. And as we talked about last time, I can't mess it up because I only receive through grace. So yes, I believe that it's happening. I believe that it's done. I believe that it's only a matter of time before we get to find out how it unfolds in physical form. But I actually believe so much, I can let it go. I'm actually so certain that I have received it that I let it go. And I've gone about my business and I've kept living my life. This is the flow of faith and grace together. I want to give you three quick tips to stay in this flow. Number one, receiving doesn't require evidence, just faith. Number one, receiving doesn't require evidence, just faith. It will be so much easier for you to receive after hearing this teaching when you understand no evidence is required. Let me go back to my favorite analogy with the online shopping. Do you need to see the physical package to know your order is complete? No. The physical package comes later. The physical package follows the purchase. The physical package is a physical manifestation that shows up on a delay from the initial decision. 
So you don't need to see a package to know the order is complete. You just need confirmation. And I'm here to tell you, your faith is the confirmation. God is the confirmation. Your vision is the confirmation. And faith will give you a peace that confirms it. God will give you a peace that confirms it. But number one, you've got to understand, receiving doesn't require evidence, just faith. Very closely related to that. Quick tip number two here. Number two, you don't have to feel anything different to trust that it works. You don't have to feel anything different to trust that it works. Now, here's what I want to say on this tip number two. If you do feel something, that's great. That's a-okay. I, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that's a problem. You're allowed to feel anything. And it is perfectly okay, maybe even potentially helpful, if you feel something positive, if you feel something good, if you feel something new. But where I think a lot of people have gone wrong is the idea that I really haven't received it yet because I don't feel it or I don't feel it enough. I don't feel it all the way. I don't feel myself as that new version of me yet. I don't feel the new reality yet. And how many people have convinced themselves, I'm not ready to receive, I'm not there yet, I still have got more work to do because your feelings aren't yet where you want them to be. And I just felt like I was supposed to tell you today on quick tip number two, you don't have to feel anything different to trust that it worked. I could say it this way, you don't have to feel anything different to let yourself receive. I can't count the number of things that I have received in consciousness and it felt so boring at the time. It felt so mundane at the time. It felt so ordinary that I didn't feel anything unique, that I didn't feel anything special. I can't count the number of things that I received that when I first spoke them, when I first got my belief behind them, when I first wrote it or said it to someone or decided I want to move in this direction, that there were no feelings with it whatsoever. And yet, it didn't stop me from receiving. You know, it's funny because a lot of the same people who will think I am superstitious about words are very, very particular about their feelings. And when it comes to particularly this manifestation conversation, they are convinced my feelings always have to be a certain way and I'm not feeling it, so I've got to fix that ASAP. And this doesn't feel real yet or feel believable yet, so I have so much work to do around it. And and I just want you to know, or at least consider, can you at least consider with me today, what if this flow is simpler and easier than you think? And what I notice in this ancient spiritual text is nowhere does the receiving require a certain feeling. And of course, I want it to feel as amazing as it can. I want you to feel good in every way and in every area of your life. This is not anti-feeling good or anti-feelings. I just felt called to encourage somebody today. Please don't get lost in a mental game of my feelings aren't quite there, aren't quite right, aren't quite aligned in all the ways I wish they were. So. I'm not ready yet. I've got more receiving to do. I just felt led to encourage you. 
You don't have to feel anything specific or feel anything different for it to work, to trust that it worked, to let yourself receive. And then last but not least, quick tip number three, the best thing you can do is continue living your life in this flow of faith and grace. The best thing you can do is continue living your life. And I'm going to show you what I mean and return to the story for a moment here. Because this really is exactly what Jesus demonstrated, exactly what he modeled in the story. We see Jesus speaks to the tree. Nothing happens. And then he leaves it. He goes on about his day. He goes on about his business. And by the way, notice Jesus isn't bothered or concerned by what anybody around him thinks. Maybe I should have shared this earlier. It would have felt more natural somewhere else in the outline, but I spontaneously feel led to speak to it right here for a moment that imagine if Jesus was worried about what people were going to think. Imagine if Jesus didn't want to look like a fool or a failure. Imagine if Jesus felt the need to defend himself to try to not look crazy or delusional, to try to make sure that everybody understood. I know it doesn't look like anything right now. I know it looks like that didn't work. I know what you're thinking. And yet Jesus doesn't feel any need to be defensive. Jesus doesn't offer any explanation. He is perfectly okay with the fact that it looked like nothing happened. Nothing shifted, nothing changed, and he just goes about his day doing his thing, moving on. And what we see is he speaks to the tree, he leaves it, and Jesus and the disciples continue their itinerary. I actually skipped a bunch of verses when we were reading the text earlier simply because they weren't relevant to this principle, this demonstration, this part of the story. But I want to mention now, I actually skipped a bunch of verses for sake of time, which tells you they had a full itinerary. They were doing a lot. They had a whole day of stuff. Which is why the text seems to indicate the disciples forgot about the tree. Entirely. They just forgot. Like, I really do wonder, I really do wish we could hear their inner dialogue or maybe even their dialogue with each other. If I had to guess, I would imagine that initially... They were waiting, they were watching in real time, expecting something dramatic to happen. And to be fair, they had seen healings, they had seen miracles, they had seen some pretty dramatic things unfold by this point. I would imagine, initially, they were expecting the drama, expecting the theatrics, expecting something instantaneous. But then, nothing seems to happen. Nothing shifted instantaneously. And so, you know, maybe they had an inner dialogue about it with themselves. Maybe they had a group dialogue out of earshot of Jesus. They talked about, do you think he failed that time? Do you think something went wrong? You know, what was that? That was kind of weird. We don't know. We can only speculate. But the text does seem to indicate they completely forgot about it by the next day because there was so much going on. And by the way, don't be the person that gives up on something 
when it doesn't happen on your timetable, when it doesn't happen the way you thought, when it doesn't happen instantaneously. Don't be the person that just lets the vision go. I'm not talking about letting go in terms of surrender, but letting go in terms of giving up. Don't be the person who gives up, who quits, who just forgets about it all together because it didn't happen immediately. But that is what it seems like happens in this story, that the disciples just moved on. They forgot about it. They have a whole day of stuff. And then they go to bed and sleep. And then they wake up and they've got yet another itinerary. They've got another whole day of activities. And in the middle of that day, they happen to, quote unquote, walk past that very same tree and it suddenly comes back to mind and it all clicks and it all makes sense and the disciples remember. But do you see what I mean? That Jesus continued living his life. He spoke to the tree. He knew it was done. He moved on. He spoke to the tree. He knew it was done. He moved on. This flow is so different, so countercultural to what many of us believe is required for receiving. But this is the exact message I felt like I was supposed to share for somebody today. He spoke to the tree. He knew it was done. He moved on. Believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. And so I want to encourage you today, the best thing you can do once you have believed and once you have received is to release, is to keep living your life. I want to encourage you today, get used to nothing happening initially and that being okay. Get used to not needing an emotional or a dramatic or a life-changing experience or feeling to be necessary every single time for you to know that things are shifting in the invisible realm. I want to encourage you today, get used to seeing no evidence yet and other people seeing no evidence yet and yet you do not waver and live your life. Continue living your life through it all, knowing you have received. You know what I think the trickiest part about this for a lot of people is? And God, help me and speak through me now. I pray that I can articulate this well. I think the trickiest part for a lot of people is they don't want to stop thinking about the thing they're waiting on. Or they don't feel like they can, that they should, that they're supposed to stop thinking about the thing. That they don't know how to stop thinking about the thing that they're waiting on. And this might feel a little awkward or uncomfortable or counterintuitive, but there's a reason I'm saying it this way, that while you're waiting on something, but once you have believed and once you have received and it is done, and you have released, the best thing you can do really is continue living your life, whatever form that takes, which really does mean you probably don't need to be thinking about it right now. You probably don't need to be thinking about it continually. You probably don't need to be thinking about it around the clock. I felt led to ask you today, What would you be doing without the worry? What would you be doing right now if you truly trusted that it was taken care of? How would you be spending your time if you could relax and you didn't have to think about it? My favorite part about this story and this key principle that I felt called to share with you about the flow of faith and grace lies in the fact that Jesus spoke to it 
and then he moved on and he kept living his life. You know what one of my favorite parts of this story is? We don't see the tree change in real time. We only see the the results of the change, the outcome of the change, the final product of the change. And oh my God, I just got full body chills. This is not the main message of this talk today, but I could do a whole separate talk. Maybe I will someday. About the change that you don't see in real time, but you see the harvest of, you see the fruit of, you see the result of. Because what I know to be true on a spiritual level is that is often how it works. That is often how it seems to flow. That is often the story of the change. We don't even always see it while it's happening in a way that we can directly recognize and nail down and pinpoint, but we see the result of the change. We see the impacts of the change. We see the undeniable shift on the other side. I think it is so significant. The disciples never see the in real time, in front of their eyes, evolution of the tree from one stage to another, from one condition to another. They actually never see the tree changing in front of them. But they see it in one condition and they see it the next day. And it is undeniable that somewhere along the way, the change occurred. That somewhere along the way, exactly what was spoken came to pass. And I decree and declare this over every single person listening today who receives it. That this is the flow of receiving. This is the flow of faith and grace. And this is what you will see in your life in the days to come. That you may not know how it's going to happen. You may not be able to force it or manufacture it or calculate it. And you may not even see all of the change happen in real time. But somehow, make no mistake about it. What you believe and receive will indeed be yours to the fullest. Somehow, some way, what you have spoken, what you claim for yourself and take by faith will be done. And you might not even see all of the evolution It might catch you by surprise. It might happen while you're not looking. It might happen while you're thinking about something else. It might happen while you're asleep. But you will find yourself standing on the other side, standing in what you believed, standing next to what you spoke. That is a word for somebody today. Let me know in the comments if you receive it. And I want to give a point of clarification here because someone might be listening thinking, okay, but Stefan, I hear you, I'm tracking, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but aren't there sometimes things that we need to do in order to get in alignment with what we asked for? Sometimes, Don't we need to change? Don't we need to get ready? Don't we need to adjust for the thing that we asked for, the thing we're believing, the thing we're receiving? And I would say yes to that question. Of course. Let me use a really basic and simple example, okay? If somebody is fairly confident that it's going to rain where they are in a particular day. It would make sense that because of that belief, because of that knowing, because of the information that they have and their expectation around it, there are actions that they would take. 
they might purchase or bring an umbrella with them where they happen to be going. They might get a poncho. They might make a selection that we're going to go to the indoor activity today, not the outdoor one, etc. And so very simple, very basic example. But when we are truly expecting something, are there things we do? Are there ways in which we show up? Are there ways in which we prepare? Absolutely. And there are moments where there is something we are inspired and directed to do because of what we are believing and receiving. But I want to clarify today. I want to be very clear. I believe even that still gets to happen within the flow of grace. That we don't need to leave the flow of grace for any of those actions. And points of clarification that I really wanted to make here. I believe all of those kinds of steps that, again, I think we can be so naturally guided to in a very effortless way within a flow of peace. All of those things are really more about action than they are achievement or anxiety. And that distinction is so important. The person who knows it's going to rain and so they get an umbrella. That's a great step to take. But do you see how that's not difficult? That's not complicated. That's not an endless series of work that we never know when it's done and we never know when we've done enough. That is a simple action born out of an expectation. Let me simply get an umbrella. Do you see what I mean? That all of those things can happen within our flow of faith and grace. And it is so much more about action than it is about achievement or anxiety. There's a big difference between the action of getting an umbrella and the achievement of, well, because it's going to rain, I now need to learn everything there is about rain. And I need to make sure I am prepared in 17 different ways for all possible situations. And I need to learn about flooding. And I need to learn about thunderstorms. And I need to learn about natural disasters. And I need to be prepared in this way. And I need to go learn this. And I need to study this. And in fact, I might as well cancel the whole vacation because... I'm not ready yet to face the possibility of rain. That would be absurd. Yes, maybe an action is needed, but not achievement. And certainly not the anxiousness of somebody who says, I can't do anything. I can't leave the house. I can't go anywhere. I can't take a chance. I can't take a risk. I've got to make sure we get through the rain. That is certainly not required and certainly not helpful. So get the umbrella or get the poncho. Make the decision with the plans. The bottom line is, yes, sometimes there are things that we are naturally directed to do. But always within that flow of faith and grace. And this is Stefan here from the future Popping back in to share something that I felt called to add to this discussion because I feel like there may be someone listening to this thinking, okay, okay, I can see how this would be really helpful for one-time things, for short-term things, for smaller things, but what about the big stuff, Stefan. What about ongoing things? And here's what I want to say and what I felt called to just add into the episode about this. The example that I want to use here is, let's suppose someone feels called to write a book. 
and I apologize if this is a little too on the nose. And what I'm describing is literally true and applicable for someone today. I don't know whether to say I'm so sorry or thank you and you're welcome, but either way, this is the example I feel called to use. Let's say somebody knows that they are meant to write a book, okay? That's a pretty big vision. That's a pretty big thing to create, right? So they're going to begin with step one of believing, and then they're going to move into step two of receiving. And then you might be wondering, okay, but Stefan, this is like a big project. So what exactly does it mean for them to release it? And here's the way that I see this, and I pray that this is helpful and clarifying for somebody today. I would suggest they actually want to have moved through step two and to know that they have received it and it is done, frankly, even before they begin to write. Like I would suggest, step two, receive, is a great starting point and foundation to begin a project from. And then they get to move forward in the flow, which for this individual happens to include writing and editing and working on a book, right? That is part of their calling. That is part of the flow. So they get to move forward doing that in the flow from a zone of step three, which often in my experience looks like releasing again and again and again. Meaning, here I am yet again today, working on this thing, working on this project, working on this idea. And let me remind myself of what I am believing about it. Let me remind myself of what we know is the outcome that I have received. And it is done. It is certain. It is happening. And then as I move forward with this project today, God, I release it all to you and I trust every step of the way and it is all in your hands. And as I move forward, I release. And as I stay in the flow, I release. And as I take the next right step, I release. And so the way that I view it is, instead of this being a never-ending puzzle to solve in order to receive, it gets to be a practice of releasing, releasing, releasing over and over again as they stay in the flow. Let me know in the comments if that explanation was helpful for somebody. And last thing I will say here as future Stefan interjecting before we get back to the teaching is, I really think this continual flow of releasing is relevant not just maybe for big projects, big ideas, big dreams, but also for things that we struggle to let go of a little bit more than usual, for things that one time will certainly not probably be enough. And one thing I have learned is that it is perfectly okay to choose to release something for the second time or the third time or the fifth time. And in the same way that Emily Fletcher talks about in a meditation context, you learn to work the letting go muscles. I feel like the same thing applies to the practice of releasing. You make it a practice and you choose to embrace it. And you learn to get good at and even welcome the opportunity to work those muscles. And so I just want to give somebody full permission and encouragement today. It's okay 
if when you begin to work with this flow of believe receive release it's okay if you release something and then you find that it pops up again and now you're thinking about it and now you're worrying about it and now you're not sure what to do that's normal you're human it's okay and you can release as many times as you need to and what I have gotten clear on is that so much of my peace is dependent upon how good I am at releasing and how quickly I can release whatever is on my mind and heart. And I got to tell you, I have so many ways of doing this. I have a thread in chat gpt where i write out my prayers and i will type something there and release it over and over again if i need to i have a notepad and sometimes when i need to hand something over to god and stop thinking about it i will write something on the notepad fold it up and then set it under a book at the moment. I am setting things under a book called Speak the Blessing, which I feel like is fitting for this teaching. But there have been things that I am pretty sure I have written down on a little piece of paper and folded up five or more times to put under that book because I was practicing release. I'm telling you, your peace is so determined by how good you become at working this faith muscle and by how quickly you will let yourself let go and there are so many ways to do it there are so many ways that i practice the the art of letting go and releasing something over to god but i really just wanted to encourage you here that for the big things and the long-term things and the tricky things or really anything that feels like maybe this isn't going to work or maybe this isn't going to be enough, just know you can release again and again. You can release as many times as you need to. And I just want to share as a quick testimony here there is something specific that I received this year that was a very big deal to me. And I went back and looked out of curiosity and because I felt prompted to, and I discovered I had written that thing down and put that thing in my journaling and sewed for that thing a total of seven times collectively. Now, I don't know if I worded that very well, but essentially what I'm trying to say is I sewed for it a couple times. I declared it in journaling a couple of times. I wrote it down on a list to hand over to God once or twice. And I just remember when I added it up, I could find at least seven times that I spoke that thing and stood in that thing and reaffirmed that thing, but in a way that practiced this flow. I didn't speak it and affirm it and bring it back to my consciousness in a way that sent me into pressure and attachment and obsession. Yes, I did it seven times, but every single one of those times, I would believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. And that made all the difference. And when all was said and done, it didn't matter to me that it took seven times of believe, receive, release. I was just thrilled because I knew I was going to be celebrating all along. And so what I am inviting you into today is believe with faith, receive with confidence, 
release with trust. If you're taking notes, write those down. Somebody type those out in the comments. Believe with faith. Receive with confidence. Release with trust. That is how you stay in the grace flow. And I am telling you, it makes such a massive difference when you do that step of releasing. When you don't cling on to it with pressure and attachment and excess energy, but you give it over to God and you surrender and you trust and you let go, it makes all the difference in the world. And I know for some of you, this is a foreign language. For some of you, this is new. For some of you, this is very different from how you're used to creating. But the invitation is here. This is the grace flow. Believe with faith. Receive with confidence, release with trust. And I am so excited to see what is born and what is sparked and what is created in your life in these 77 days of grace as you open up to operating in this flow. You know, as I was preparing to share this with you, I came across a quote that stopped me in my tracks. I just knew I was supposed to include it in this teaching. And what I love about this quote is it really gives us the pathway for maximum receiving. And I'll explain what I mean. This is the quote. God can do more with your surrender than you could ever do with your control. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. If you're in the comments, you can type that out for everyone with a timestamp and maybe even personalize it. Claim it over yourself in first person. God can do more with my surrender than I could ever do with my control. That really is the essence of what all of 77 days of grace is really about. That this is the path to maximum receiving. This is how it happens. It's not about you forcing it. It's not about you manufacturing it. It's not about you controlling it. None of that was required for the tree to shift overnight after a simple word was spoken. And none of that will be required for a shift in your life either. Why? Because God can do more with my surrender than I could ever do with my control. Now, in just a moment, we're going to pray together. And as always, it will be my favorite moment in the entire teaching and the most powerful moment of the entire teaching. But before we get there, as always, I want to shout out every single one of my incredible and generous partners all over the world who give consistently to make teachings like this one possible. And as I shout them out and say thank you, you have an opportunity right now to practice the flow that we have been talking about today. If you would like to give one time or to become an ongoing partner, if something in this message spoke to you today, and if you would like to receive it in a personal way, and participate in an energy exchange. Thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. I joyfully receive, and you are certainly welcome to do that. All of the info and all of the options are available for you at lovegrovepartners.com. We'll put that link on the screen and in the episode description, but it is lovegrovepartners.com. And like I said, 
you really do have the opportunity to put these principles into motion that we've been talking about today. Because, you know, every time somebody gives, I always invite them to make it a seed that they are sowing. I know that language might be intimidating or unfamiliar for some of you, but on a basic level, we know money is energy. Every transfer of money is a transfer of energy. And there are so many principles behind the idea of when we give, making it a seed, that we plant into that which we know to be good ground, expecting a harvest in the future. And so I am always inviting people every time they give here to do it as a seed and to sow with intention. I will remind you quickly here that one of the most prolific faith teachers of all time was once asked before he passed, what is the greatest lesson that you have ever learned? What is the one idea that has made the biggest difference in your life? And he thought for a moment and said, no one has ever asked me that question before, but it's a good question. <laughs> Mind you, this is a man who used his faith in all kinds of ways, used his faith to do impossible things, used his faith to grow a global organization, used his faith for healing, used his faith for miracles, used his faith for all kinds of breakthroughs in his lifetime. But he was asked, what's the most important thing that if you had to pick one thing? And he answered and said, making the discovery that I could give as a seed planted into good ground and that I could target my seed somewhere specific and give it an assignment and expect a specific harvest. He said that has impacted my life the most. It was that significant to him and to his journey. And so when partners give, when anybody gives, even just one time at lovegrovepartners.com, on nearly every platform I believe that we have there, there is a section where you are able to and invited to share with me what you are believing for. And thank you for taking the time to share it with me. I read every single one, I pray over every single one, and it is such a special thing to get to believe with you and stand in agreement with you. But I wanna talk through this flow with you that we've been talking about today for a moment because for all of you who are giving today or who give here on a regular basis, I want you to realize you can use the exact flow that we've been talking about today every single time you give. And I pray that you do. I pray that you do utilize this fully. So let's talk for a moment about this flow. Believe, receive, release, and you'll see what I mean. And then we'll pray together. But Step one is believe. I want to challenge you there. Ask to be guided to something to believe for your future. Some of you won't struggle with this at all because there's already something very much on your mind and on your heart and you know exactly what you want to sow for. Others of you, nothing immediately comes to mind, which is A-okay. And that's where I invite you to just open up and pray and ask for guidance. Ask for vision. Ask to be given something to believe over your future. Personally, I recommend 
one specific intention for one deliberate seed. One thing per seed is my recommendation so that it's potent and targeted. Understand, I have experimented with this myself hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And believe me, I have certainly done the type of seed that has nine things written under it because I had a lot of desires and I had a lot that I was trying to release. I wanna be very clear, there's nothing wrong with that, but I do believe you will have the greatest success, the greatest results, and the greatest experience with this if you let yourself really hone in on one thing per seed so that it is as potent and specific and targeted as it can be. And so step one is believe, ask to be guided for what you should believe for your future what you should sow into, what vision you should be holding, something that you can get your faith behind and something that you feel a peace, you feel confirmed, you feel joyful as you think about. That's step one. And by the way, if you happen to be giving somewhere that you're not able to share it with me there, I still recommend that you record this for yourself. You know, if I'm giving somewhere and I don't have the ability to put something in the notes for them or that's not something that they would read, that's not something that they would receive in any way, please know I will always write out or type out my intention for my own records. I want to be able to look back and I'm certainly going to release it. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to have it stored. I want to have record of it. I want to be able to look back at it. So document this, this step one piece of belief for yourself, whether or not you share it where you're giving. But if you're giving here, I would certainly, certainly, certainly love to know what you are believing for and to get an agreement with you. And that is step one. Step two, receive. This is where you get to know that just as certainly as you sow, you will certainly reap. Let me say it this way. The timing is uncertain, but the harvest is certain. The timing may be uncertain, but the harvest is certain. And as you sow, you trust that it is done. You know that it is done. You feel that it is done. And you receive it right then and there. This is step two, receive. And I want for every single person who is giving today or in the days to come to try this out. Make sure that you don't skip this step. Affirm over your seed, if you would like to, that as I sow, I most certainly will reap. And just as I sow bountifully, so I will reap bountifully. Though I don't know the timing, because the timing is uncertain, my harvest is certain. And I know that it is done right here and now. I receive it. And I feel that I have received it right here and now. Don't skip over this step. Give yourself this experience as you give. And then you move to step three. And I know some of you will be doing this right now in real time with me. You move to step three, which is release. And don't we know this is true even with the physical, biological example in nature that in order to plant a seed, we must let go of it. I can't simultaneously eat my seed and plant it. I can't hide my seed and plant it. 
I can't stash away my seed just in case and also plant it. We know this to be true on every level. In order to plant a seed, you must let go of it. And I want you to envision this with me. Envision how in the planting process you let go and you watch the seed drop into the soil where it gets buried and covered up and disappears for the time being. And what happens next, as I sometimes playfully say here? Absolutely nothing. Nothing happens the next minute. Nothing happens that day. Nothing happens right away with the seed that has just been planted. You can come back and check as many times as you want later that day. Probably there's nothing to see yet. And that's okay. But you know something is coming. You know that one day you will reap what you just planted. You know a harvest is down the road. In your future and up ahead. And let me just say here, that is the same way it works with the sowing. Except I will clarify, though I make no guarantees, sometimes when it comes to this type of planting, this type of sowing, and in this community, people experience a same day return. Again, every person, every story, every seed is different. I make no guarantees, but it is something we see often in this community. That even within the day that somebody sows, things begin to happen, things begin to move, things begin to change. And yet, we also know it's not so important. And we don't have to be attached to whether or not something happens right away like that. I will tell you, family, as my testimony, the seeds and the harvests that have changed my life the most were not a right away situation, were not immediate, and yet they were permanently impactful in my life. And so step three is release. And I actually had a partner tell me recently, Stefan, I'm so glad that you talked about this idea of expect then release because I don't think I was ever doing that when it came to my giving. I didn't understand the releasing part and hopefully you understand through this teaching today why the releasing part is indeed so, so important. So like I said, all of the options, all of the ways to give are at that website, which I'll give you one more time, lovegrovepartners.com. And I really do invite you to go through those three steps with me now to activate your faith and to use it to use your power of belief as you give to receive right here and now not to wait and see what happens but to know that you have received as that text that we have read today invites us to believe that you have received right here and now, even as you give. Practice the receiving. Step into the receiving today and then release. And as you let go, as you sow the seed, as you press that button, I want you to feel yourself both releasing the seed into the ground releasing a harvest into your future and then really at the deepest level releasing that desire that dream that specific intention over to god feel yourself moving into trust feel yourself letting go in the most powerful possible way feel yourself 
shifting into a surrender where you know it is done. It is safe to release. I put it all in the hands of God and now I stay in a place of rest. Expecting my harvest and expecting the very best. And I know in real time, after you give, we're going to pray together in just a minute here, but I wanna remind you as we do, in the spirit of this teaching, once you have released, and I, I'm speaking this now both for sowing in particular and for anywhere that you work this process, that you use this flow, once you have released, it is correct to go about your life, to go about your business, to do whatever you would normally be doing without any worry, fear, or concern. It is the right choice to keep living your life. It is the right choice to move forward with your day. It is the right choice to move forward knowing it is done and your only job is to stay in the flow, to be present right where you are and to keep doing the next right thing. So I bless you into that release that brings a peace that passes all understanding. I bless you into staying in the flow. I bless you into enjoying your life to the fullest, knowing what you are expecting is on the way. Feel free to pause this episode if you need to, to take care of everything. And then meet me back here when you're ready. If it's safe and comfortable to do so where you are, you can go ahead and close your eyes. And we will move into a prayer space together. God, who is my source, my shepherd, and my friend, thank you for being with me in this moment. Thank you for the spectacular story of my life. Thank you for all the twists and turns that have led me perfectly right here. God, I thank you for every single person who has been brought to this teaching at just the right moment in their life. May it be a turning point for them. May this be a day that shifted something in such a life-altering way that they always look back on it and smile. Thank you, God, for every single person who is praying with me now. We are joined together across all space and time, knowing there is no distance in the Spirit. God, I celebrate 77 days of grace and how it is unfolding and evolving and expanding even thus far. I celebrate all the goodness that is here for each and every one of us when we choose to open up and receive through grace. Thank you, God, for the message of this story from start to finish. Thank you for the reminder of just how much power every single one of us truly has. God, I pray that this teaching would awaken someone and open their eyes today to the fact that they are not trapped, they are not a victim, they are not powerless, waiting on someone or something external to fix everything or to make everything better. But the truth is, all of God is right where they are. They are not alone. You are with them and within them, even in this moment. And so thank you for helping us step into our power today, God. Thank you for moving us into our divine authority and all of our inheritance. 
God, we recognize today the power that lies within our words and our faith. As I shared earlier in the teaching, I love that this story involves a tree that was not producing being cursed. So there's no violence, there's no harm, there's very low stakes in this story. And yet, it is made so abundantly clear. Never think that your words don't carry power. Never think that your faith is not enough to shift reality and to move mountains. The message is clear, God. Never think that you can't spark something into existence simply with your words, with your faith, with something that you speak. We receive this reminder of our power today. And God, I pray that it sticks with us in the days to come, that we absorb this truth and this text, that a word spoken from our mouth is enough to accomplish or destroy nearly anything. May we use that power wisely. May we use that power with love and intention and care. God, I pray for the person on the other end in agreement, joining with my faith right now. May they speak blessing over themselves. I know that can sound cheesy. I know that can sound corny, God. Like, what do you mean I'm supposed to bless myself? But God, I pray that they would recognize just how much their words matter, that the miracle is in their mouth. The miracle is in something they possess. It lies in what they say. And I remember, God, the day that it hit me. My miracle does not lie in somebody or something out there. My miracle does not lie in a person, in a client, in an invitation, in a relationship, in an opportunity. My miracle does not lie in something that I do not currently have. But I've got all I need for the miracle. And it begins with what I speak. I pray that that truth would hit someone in the best way today, the same way that it has impacted me. And so God, I affirm over the person praying with me now that they speak life over themselves. They speak goodness over themselves. They speak blessings over themselves. And not only that, God, but they are a carrier of light, a carrier of goodness, a carrier of the blessing. Everywhere they go, I decree and declare that they speak blessing over others that they build people up, they encourage people, they speak to the greatness within everyone that they encounter. And most of all, God, for each and every one of us today, we let the blessing be spoken over us, replacing all old stories. I don't know who this was for today, God, but I felt it so strongly. I know that it was for someone. May we hear your voice telling us how loved we are, telling us how proud of us you are, telling us that we are your beloved child and nothing could or would ever change that. May we hear your voice. May we receive your blessing. May we receive your affirmation at the deepest level right now. And God, as we hear that and receive that and let that in, may any story that does not serve us immediately be cleared. 
May any story that we have carried as a curse now be replaced at every level of our consciousness by your unconditional love and your unconditional blessing. Thank you, God, for the flow that we have been able to study in this episode today. Thank you for this story where it is demonstrated to us. You speak it. You release it. You move on. You speak it. You release it. You move on. You speak it. You release it. You move on. What a beautiful story this is. And God, I pray today that people are receiving the truth. It gets to be easier than they think. May we all hear these words today. That if we believe it, choosing belief over doubt, we can speak to anything. We can ask for anything. We can pray for anything. And in that moment, as we believe we have received it, it is done and it is ours. May we all receive that truth, that reminder, that encouragement today. Thank you, God, for this flow that is available to each and every one of us. Believe, receive, release. I pray that that gets integrated on a soul level for each and every person praying with me right now. Believe, receive, release. And God, I spoke so passionately and from the heart today, but I know what it's like to feel exhausted. I know what it's like to wander down roads of seek and do not find. And I pray today that through grace, patterns have been interrupted for every person out there who has been endlessly trying to receive, trying to receive, trying to receive. I pray that we could set that pattern down for a moment and let you love us, let you hold us, let you show us a better way, an easier way, a gentler way. Thank you, God, for this truth that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. We don't have to live with anything that has become a burden, even if it just became a burden by accident. Thank you, God, that we can throw any burden onto you. We are releasing all the burdens right here, right now, and moving back into the blessing zone. Believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. Thank you, God, that in these 77 days, we are learning the unforced rhythms of grace. And they are gentle. They are delightful. This is a weird word maybe to use, and I don't know why it's the one coming to me, God, but they are absolutely groovy. These are some groovy, unforced rhythms of grace that you are leading us into. And so, God, I pray for every single person listening to this teaching and praying with me now as they operate within this flow in a way they never have before. Thank you that the faith of God is alive and active on the inside of them. Thank you, God, that they certainly have more than enough faith for everything that is required because even the faith of a mustard seed is enough to move mountains. And so God, I decree and declare their belief is being activated even as they listen right now. 
Thank you, God, for making receiving so simple and easy and clear through this teaching today. Thank you, God, for changing the way that we look at receiving forever, that it doesn't have to be complicated or complex or convoluted. It gets to be easy. It gets to be light. And so thank you, God, that whatever it is that is on our heart, whatever it is we are sowing for, whatever it is we are believing for in this moment, we get to receive right here and now. We get to receive anytime. And we feel into this. Know that it is yours. Know that it is done. We take a second to breathe that in. What does it feel like to know that it is mine? What does it feel like to know that it is done? I know that it is mine. I know that it is done. I know that it is mine. I know that it is done. Feel yourself receiving right here and now. Thank you, God, that it's not a question mark. We don't have to wait and see. We don't have to wonder if we're going to receive. But God, we are stepping into a new paradigm of receiving. From this day forward, we have a new understanding of what it truly means to receive, and we practice it right now. We know that it is ours. We know that it is done. We know that we don't have to leave this prayer without receiving. And then thank you, God, that we don't have to get stuck in this step or stay here indefinitely trying to figure it all out. Thank you, God, that we get to move forward in faith knowing we have received and we get to let go because that is what you do when you know that something is handled, something is taken care of, something is done. We feel today, we are so certain that we have received, that it is done, it is finished, it has been taken care of, it has been handled. And so because we know that, because we're sure of that, because we have received, it is safe for us now to release. It is safe for us now to let go. And so in this moment, we fully release. We hand everything over to you. We let go and we let it show up with joy. Thank you, God, for this truth that receiving does not require evidence. It just requires faith. I speak this reminder for each and every one of us that faith is the only currency required in the invisible realm and we certainly have that currency we have plenty of it and we are using that currency in agreement stronger than ever today so thank you god we don't need to see any evidence we don't need to see anything else happen or anything else change we just get to believe Thank you, God, for this truth that we don't have to feel anything different to know that it worked. I pray that this piece really frees somebody this week. That they don't think that their feelings are an emergency. That they don't think that their feelings are a problem. And God, I pray that people can hear my heart and hear the truth behind this. That it's not in any type of way that devalues human beings or emotions or every valid part of the human experience. But I've just been in personal development world long enough to know there are so many people who judge themselves for their feelings. There are so many people who are terrified of their feelings. There are so many people who feel like their feelings must be the thing that is screwing it up. 
And God, I pray that you would just set people free today from any thinking pattern that is not serving them. And particularly, any type of attachment or judgment or resistance around any of this that simply isn't helping. I speak this truth. We don't have to feel anything different or feel anything specific for it to work. We can simply know that we have received. God, there have been moments where I didn't feel anything mystical. I didn't feel anything magical. I didn't feel anything special. But I still knew that there was a belief that I was grounded in, regardless of what I was feeling. I think of moments where I felt a little sick, or I felt a little tired, or I felt a little off, and yet I continue to receive, and your goodness was still unending. I think about moments where I felt, quite frankly, in a bad mood. And so much good poured in anyway, because even when I wasn't feeling good, you are unconditional good. With infinite good always on the way to us. And God, I'm going to leave it there for now on this truth, but I pray that people would feel so encouraged that they're doing it right that they're right where they're supposed to be, that nothing can stop their receiving. And then most of all, God, I pray that people would feel themselves living in this flow where they don't have to be on hold. They don't have to pause everything. They don't have to live their life in a waiting mode or a fixing mode or an endless healing mode trying to get to some hypothetical destination, but thank you for this reminder, God. We are actually meant to continue living our life. This is the divine flow. Speak to it, release it, move on. Believe it, receive it, and then move forward in the flow. Thank you, God, for how simple it really gets to be. And so thank you, God, that we are not deterred by appearances. We do not grow weary in well-doing. We do not make a meaning out of any part of the appearances or the circumstances right now. But we let ourselves trust, and we let ourselves relax, and we let ourselves stay in the flow. Thank you, God, that in the days to come, people get to discover who they are without the worry. People get to discover and live into a version of themselves that knows it is all going to be okay that all is well, that it is already taken care of. Thank you, God, for making space in our consciousness and making space in our lives as we no longer believe. We need to keep thinking about it. And so from this day forward, God, we live in this beautiful flow. We believe with faith. We receive with confidence. We release with trust. Thank you, God, for bringing us back and reminding us of this truth many, many times. Thank you, God, for showing us how to do this day by day, moment by moment. We believe with faith. We receive with confidence. We release with trust. What a flow that is to live in. Thank you, God, for the flow of faith and grace. As I have shared before, we receive by faith through grace. Our job is the easy part. With all things in the spiritual realm, our job is just to believe. Our job is just to receive. Our job is simply to say yes. So right here and now, God, we do the easy part. We do our job. We say yes and we believe and we receive right here and now. 
And having done that, we release. Because though it flows by faith, and that is the starting point and the activation point, we know that it flows through grace. And that is not about our work, that is not about our hustle, that is not about our performance. But God, it flows through grace, that gentle, unforced, groovy rhythm of grace that we are learning to live into in these 77 days. God, I pray for every single person who is sowing something today, that they would have a whole new experience of sowing, a greater experience of faith, and a greater experience of grace, a greater experience of receiving than they've ever had before. God, I pray that as they release whatever it is that they are sowing, and they let it go into the ground and they hand it all over to you. I pray that they would see in the days to come an undeniable harvest on this very seed and whatever it looks like, however it happens, however it all unfolds, May it be a reminder to them of this very teaching and may it be undeniable evidence to them that this flow really works when they believe, receive, release. Believe, receive, release. May they have their own personal evidence that when they believe, receive, release they end up with a best case result in the end every single time. So may they be filled with peace and trust, joy and faith in their believing and in their sowing today. God, I expect the very best for them and for their harvest and for their future, but I also pray that they would experience a whole new level of releasing as they give today, that they would know what it is to truly release and then to keep living their life and go about their day and go about their business knowing it is done. Finally, God, I speak this truth for each and every one of us that you can do more with our surrender than we could ever do with our control. May we all live into and fully integrate that oh so important shift over the course of this season. Thank you, God. You can do more with our surrender than we could ever do with our control. We get used to living from that space here and now. Thank you for helping us believe. Thank you for helping us receive. Thank you for helping us release. I celebrate in advance the way that this episode sets people free. I celebrate in advance the way this changes our receiving forever. I celebrate in advance all the mountains that are moved and the miracles that are sparked as a result of this life-changing truth. Thank you, God. I speak all of this in the name of Jesus who said, all things are possible for the one who believes. And so it is. And so we are together in agreement. Amen and amen. That does it for this episode today. If you are still listening, you made it to the end. Congratulations. I would like to think this episode spoke to you in a significant way and that something resonated with you in this particular teaching. And if that is the case, I would invite you to take a moment, hit the share button on whatever platform you may be on, and share this episode on your favorite social media platform. I'll let you choose which one, and you know who you're connected to and where your community is at. But the bottom line is you can hear in my voice all throughout this episode how passionate I am about changing 
the receiving conversation. And I can only do that with your help. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance for hitting the share button and helping me get the word out about this episode and this show. Now, after this episode concludes, 77 Days of Grace, of course, continues for everybody who is going through it. If you have not officially joined us yet, it's not too late, no matter when you are hearing this. And I would love to have you join us and go through your own 77 day experience. We are gonna put this episode into a playlist over on YouTube and we will of course link that so that whether you are tuning in on YouTube or on a podcast platform, you will be able to find that entire playlist in the episode description. There is the initial Rave Church episode where I introduced the 77 Days of Grace. You can listen to that one if you haven't. There is another teaching episode already there besides this one all about the truth that I can't possibly mess it up because I always receive through grace. That teaching is available if you want to go into depth with me there. And then whatever else I feel called to put there, we will add over the course of these 77 days. One thing that I suspect will be added, though it's not currently at the moment is, a subconscious affirmation track. Specifically, I'm thinking, the one that is linked to the 77 days of goodness from last year and those 77 spectacular truths about all the good that God wants for your life. Just to give you a little explanation of why I anticipate that will be going on the playlist, I feel like all of those 77 truths really are at the core a message of grace because none of them are worded as things you have to do. Every single one of them is worded as something you just get to open your heart to, something that you just get to receive and something that God is thrilled to do for you as a child of God. So I highly recommend that subconscious affirmation track. And now I'm just making the executive decision as I record. We will certainly be adding that to the playlist. And for all of you who are on the 77 days journey with me, just stay connected. I do encourage you to press play on something from this channel, from this world of inspiring and empowering content every single day. Feel free to use this playlist. Feel free to use anything that is on the channel or on the podcast feed that can support you on your journey. Last but not least, if you and I are meeting for the first time or we are somehow still not connected via email, you can go to this website that we will also put in the episode description, lovegrove.club. And when you do, you can sign up to get encouraging messages from me in your inbox. I will stay in touch there and I will send you my favorite teaching of all time right away as a free gift. That website again is lovegrove.club, but I bless each and every one of you throughout this week, whatever it looks like for you. And for all of you who are going through 77 days of grace right now, may your experience be beyond belief in the very best way. I love you. I believe in you. And I will see you back here very soon. The best is yet to come.